previously on Machining with Joe. Choo choo! That is not a good look. As you would have seen then from the last video, on the previous machining project that we were doing, um, my milling machine actually, yeah, it gave up the ghost and sort of started self-destructing. So this is why we're in the position we are now, milling machine parts scattered all over the workshop. So as promised, I am gonna do a video where I sort of deep dive into this and try getting this thing repaired. But something I found out very early on to repair this machine, it's gonna be really hard without a milling machine. So that leads me on to today's topic, my new milling machine. As you've probably guessed then from the thumbnail of this video, I've gone out and bought a Warco WM18B milling machine. Now, a lot of you in the comments were saying, get a bridge port, get this, get that on the last video, but I really like the brand Warco. It fits well in the foot space of my workshop. And also this thing at the minute, not sure if it is now when this video goes out, but currently, this has got 30% off on Warco's website. So for that reason, it was a no brainer really. I had to get it. In today's video then, I want to get all this anti-corrosion waxy substance off of the bed itself, get the machine all cleaned up, oiled up, head trammed in and set up really for any machining operations I need to do later on. But I want to start off by giving some initial good and bad points for a home hobbyist machinist when I've received this machine and stuff I think you guys should consider if you're gonna buy a benchtop milling machine or even in particular, this benchtop milling machine. Starting off then, let's talk about some of the main specifications of this milling machine. So in total, this thing weighs 265 kilos, which for a benchtop milling machine, it's nice and chunky. The main power of this milling machine comes from its 1.5 kilowatt DC motor, which is variable speed, which is gonna be a great addition over the geared type that my old milling machine have. Both have their pros and cons, but really wanted to try out a variable speed motor. Next, let's jump into sort of travel and how much workable space I've got on this milling machine. So in the X direction, we've got 580 millimeters of travel and the table size itself is 840 mil. In the Y direction though, the table is 210 mil and we've actually got 220 mil of travel there. So fairly similar to my old milling machine. The biggest difference on this milling machine is the head travel. So we've actually got 360 mil in the Z direction with a smaller quill stroke of only 65 millimeters. So it's gonna be interesting to see how that performs over the next few months. But something I'm really happy with is this spindle actually comes with an R8 spindle. So the bank's not gonna to be too happy because I'm gonna to have to buy some more tooling. Previous to this, all my tooling was MT3, but I think an R8 spindle comes with a lot more tooling availability and also just more secure holding. One of the things then that was most troubling when it came to installing this milling machine was actually unwiring everything. So being a small home hobbyist, I've not got the lifting equipment to lift this milling machine in as it was when it was delivered. So because of that, I had to disassemble it. And one of the main things we removed was the head. But unfortunately, something which the old mill had and this one doesn't, well, actually this one has a lot more, but the reason it was a lot more difficult was to remove the head, there's a lot more wiring. You can see at the back here, we've got the control cabinet. From the control cabinet, wiring comes up to the head and it also goes over to the control panel. But one of the wires which was most difficult to sort of remove as such was actually that spindle RPM. So the spindle RPM goes all the way through to the control panel, which means you can't just unwire it simply. So that was probably the main thing which made this really difficult to install, but it wasn't too bad. It was just fiddly and took a fair bit of time. Now, some of the features on this milling machine which I'm really glad it has, and we're gonna find out in just a minute if they're beneficial, is one, down here on the main column, 
it's a dovetail column which is going to be a great thing for accuracy when moving the head up and down but another thing which I'm hoping is going to be really beneficial is down here where the actual column bolts to the table we've got these dowel pins which I'm hoping from factory they've been set up in a way that we get no twist on this column once it's bolted down. Panning up another thing which we're going to see how well it works in a minute is on the side of the head just here we've got this adjustment screw and the idea of this adjustment screw is when it comes to tramming in the head any fine adjustments we can make on that screw which will hopefully mean our head will get perfectly trammed. I think for now that's enough talking from me. Next thing I want to do is really get this table all clean and then we can look at tramming. To clean the table then I'm just going to use a bottle of brake cleaner here to hopefully dissolve most of the wax. And once that's done, I'm then going to come back in with some good old WD-40 to give this all a good spray down and hopefully stop the surface flash rusting over. With the table all cleaned down and lubricated, now it's time to move on to tramming the head. In case this is your first time then watching a video about setting a new milling machine up, I'm just going to briefly run through how exactly you tram a milling machine head to the table. So to start with on this milling machine at the back here we've got three nuts that we need to loosen to essentially make sure the head can swivel and then on the table here I've just got a DTI set up on this bar here and two 3 to one blocks which I'm going to be using as reference. So the idea is we're going to zero it out on one side sweep the gauge across to the other side and see what the difference is and then with that we'll just adjust at the top here on this adjustment screw until we get this zero on both sides. So with the dial now moving just going to wind it round until we settle on a zero. So you can see we're reading nine on the small gauge here and zero on the main gauge. From there just going to sweep this round now onto the other block and see what we're reading over there. So looking at the gauge we're 8 and 30 on this side so that would indicate we're 0.7 mil difference side to side. So just going to make some fine adjustments to the head, go back and forth a little bit, trial this out and come back when we're bang on zero. So after a bit of fiddling then and adjusting, I've now got the head tramming to a really good point where I think this is complete. So you can see here on this gauge we've got a zero reading here and it's on the just after the number eight here. So if we swoop this across, you can hopefully see. Yeah. So it's a little bit out, let's lift it up, yeah. So it's about 0.1, so actually sorry, each individual segment there is 0 0.01 millimetres. And we're looking like we've got about two, so over 600 mil, we've got a 0 0.02 millimetre difference. So I'm pretty happy with that. If it turns out that's not as accurate as I need, I can always come back and make some more adjustments, but for now, that's pretty good. Next thing I want to do is just check the nod on this milling machine, and with that being done, that will be all the adjustments that we need to make. The nod then on this milling machine is one of the things that I'm really interested in, because as you probably saw on the previous video, my old milling machine, the nod was quite a bit out. So let's see what this is. So again, I've set this DTI gauge to zero. Now, difference here, I'm actually gonna move the carriage a little bit as well now, just to get the full travel, which will hopefully give us a better understanding of what the nod's reading. Ooh, 
windy 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 right let's see if we're nearly there yep yeah, I think we're in a good position so like I said I set it to zero holy cow that's bad so right currently what this is saying is we're actually 0.15 millimeters out which sounds a lot but I've not fully tightened down the column yet so I'm just going to work out which side's high which side's low do a bit more tightening on the column like I saw in AIDS workshop and then we'll come back and recheck this after thinking about what I was testing on that last test I've actually changed the way I'm doing it and keeping the table fixed and just swooping round the reason I'm doing that is just because I thought actually by moving the table also checking the flatness of the bed and also the nod of the mill so I've changed that up a little bit and after taking some advice from AIDS workshop on something he done similar when he got his new Walco milling machine essentially I've tightened down on either the front or the back bolts depending on which way the head is nodding to get it into a reasonably good position so you can see here we're at zero and if I just swoop that round to over here uh, zoom in so you can see we're at between 0.04 and 0.05 mil so hell of a lot better than what we were at and I think to be honest considering my old mill was a little bit worse than this I think I'll accept that so tramming and head all now set up next thing really I want to do is go around oil all the ports and then we'll probably turn the spindle on for the first time just another quick one then before we start oiling something I really like and which I got on the Warco WM180 is they throw these little oil bottles in so as simple as these are they're really handy to have when setting up new machines and also maintaining them here you can see me then going around and finding all the brass oilers in total I actually counted nine of these and that's a sign of a good machine the more oil ports the longer the machine is going to last so that's brilliant next thing I'm going to do then is just chuck up an end mill in the ER32 collet chuck run the machine for a good half an hour just to bed any bearings in and then after that I want to come back and actually check the run out so I know this carbide end mill is very accurate so hopefully that's going to replicate with the ER32 collet chuck holder that I've got and also the spindle first time then turning this on let's see what it sounds like well straight off the bat I can say that is a lot quieter than the old geared mill that I had which is good for the neighbours So just going to let that run for 30 odd minutes and bed those bearings in. Then we'll come back and we'll check the run out on this end mill. So with my DTI lever gauge all set up, I can now check the run out on the spindle. So this is actually probably going to be one of the most key checks I need to do on this milling machine because essentially the run out on the spindle bearings, I can't control that so easily. So I'm going to essentially set this dial so it's reading 25 down here and from there we can see how much it fluctuates. So each one of these segments is 0.01 millimetres and realistically we don't really want to see much more than 0.01. So just gently going to set this. Such a fine movement on this thing. All right, I think that's pretty close. All right, let's slowly run this spindle then and see what we're getting. So yeah, that's, that's really good. So that there is reading at most 0.01 millimeters so what you've got to consider is right now this run out is checking the end mill run out the ER32 collet and collet chuck run out and also the spindle run out so I suppose if I really wanted to I could set the DTI gauge up directly into the spindle bore and check it there but 
0.01 millimeters of run out with all these added attachments. It's really good, I'm, I'm really happy with that. So I think it's about time we make some chips. So off camera, I'm just gonna set up the milling machine vise, give the old one a good clean down, get it zeroed in and on center. Uh, yeah, and then maybe we'll bring over the workpiece from the project last week or last video and we'll just do some cuts in there, see how the m machine performs. Got the milling machine vise all set up on the table and got the workpiece. You might remember this from the last video, which I'm saying this piece has still broke the whole milling machine, but who's, who's playing the blame game? So not gonna do anything drastic here. Just wanna take a couple of light passes just really to see how the machine sounds and performs under load. It'll also be really nice to test out the Quill DRO just to see how accurate that is. So without further ado, let's fire it up. Start off with, let's go with a, let's go with a 02 millimeter depth of cut. Yeah, seems to handle that no problem, as I thought it would. So I think that spindle needs to go a little bit quicker. Let's dial in another 0.2mm depth of cut and we'll see how that is. Seems to handle these 0.2mm depth of cuts then very easy, which goes about saying really, I wouldn't have thought any less be a bit of a crap milling machine if it couldn't. Between now and the next sort of videos then, I need to start having a little play around with this milling machine a bit more and get to grasp of what the cutting capabilities really are with this machine. Because on the old machine, I knew exactly how far I could push it, but with this thing, still fairly new, everything feels that slight bit different, so just gonna have to see how we get on. There we have it then guys, the Warco WM18B milling machine is all now set up and we've done our first series of cuts. So first impressions, I'm relatively happy of how this machine is performing. Not gonna know long term how it's gonna behave, but for now, initially, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with it. It's got some good potential. So I think that about sums up today's video. Hope you guys are as impressed as I am with this milling machine, and I'm really excited to see what potential this has with the new features which the old machine didn't have. So that's really cool. In the next sort of few videos then, I wanna get that old project that I started, which is now conveniently already in the vise, all finished off. And then I think realistically, I need to get a DRO on this thing. So I might make that into a video or I might just get on and do it in between videos, who knows. Other than that, thank you for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed today's content. If you have, please give it a good old thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.